Hello everybody, it's Draco Hydras here, and we are going to be playing some more Doctor Who. So we have episode 3, The TARDIS. Uh, let's just jump right in and see how it goes. That is a very interesting picture, and I love it. That's not true! Okay then, name one of your holidays that didn't end up in a big, mad disaster. Well, there was Brighton Beach. Actually, no, that didn't end well. Had a lovely time in Paris. No, that went a bit wrong. Still waiting. Trouble seems to follow me around. Hmm, I've noticed. And it's never your fault, of course. Well, not always. Sometimes things go wrong all by themselves. Bit like now, then! We're still in the wrong time, Vortex! Something's wrong! Really? What gave it away? Oh, okay. So we fall out of the TARDIS. I love this intro. I do think they do a really good job in these uh, episodes to actually make you feel like you're in the TV show. You get to follow through on the adventure. They just have enough gameplay to make it feel like a game, but overall it's it's kind of like a, a movie or a TV show that plays itself. I can't hear you! Speak up! Oh, you can't breathe. Okay, uh, what do I do? How do I fix it? Quick! Oh! Great, we're both terrible at charades. Okay, two words. First word. Hurry up! Sounds like... You! The Doctor, hearts, two hearts, monkey, gorilla, King Kong, Tarzan, ribs, chest, chest! Sounds like chest, guest, best, press? Press doesn't rhyme with chest. Oh, second word. Sounds like... Face, hair, head, head. Sounds like head. Bed. Dead? Red? Red. Press red. Okay. Which one? There are loads of red things on here. All of the red things? Okay, then. Oh, okay. We got to press all the red things. What did she say inside of charades? Charades? That's not right, right? That's red. This is red. Press it. Is that it? Is it like one red thing per like module? Uh Okay. Oh this they're both levers. Okay. There's that not that many red things. What was she complaining about? Why would I tell you to press King Kong? Never mind, I'm just glad I can breathe again. The TARDIS reset has automatically extended the airship. Right, so, here's the thing. We're caught in a riptide in the fabric of space-time. We're stuck in one of the pockets, and we don't have long until the TARDIS gets dragged to the next one. You'll have to find something you can use as a tractor beam and attach it to the console. Uh, you should find what you need in the drawing room. Hurry, before the TARDIS gets dragged away. I'll be trapped here with no way back. And how exactly am I supposed to find the drawing room? I've never been there before. Right, very simple. Take the corridor for about half a mile, turn left, then right, then right again, and then it's your third, next right. Go past the weird swirly thing, left, then your other left, through the sunroom. Careful not to trip over the sun lounger, then you'll see a green door. Don't go in there. Go right, follow the wall until it gets a bit slimy, <laughs> then take the lift to the third floor. Drawing room straight ahead. You can't miss it. Easy peasy. Now, that is my private study, so don't mess about with anything. And nobody sits in my chair but me. Luck. Oh, please tell me I can sit in the chair. What are you What are you waiting for? You need to get upstairs to the drawing room. Oh, that's to talk to him. I thought that I had to use that console for something. Oh, that's the doorway to the outside. Do we go up here? Oh, nice. So I... What? I don't remember any of the directions that he told me. I was paying too much attention on how silly it was. Uh Oh, let's get this collectible. 
Hey, we got the first doctor. Traveled with his granddaughter, Susan. He was the first doctor to encounter the Daleks. Well, he was the first doctor. Where... Does it do something different if I go back a way that I came from? Can't go that way. Ooh, another collectible. Uh, licorice? Nice. Okay, where the heck do I go then? Do all of the pathways lead me there? Maybe I talk with him again. That'll be the time, Mr. Tide. Messing around with the internal structure of the TARDIS. You can fix it by lining the levers on the mechanical board. Make them all point upwards. And be quick! These blue things are chronomites, four-dimensional creatures that live in the void. Mostly harmless, but blimey O'Reilly, they're itchy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hurry up, because they're itchy. So something we gotta turn a lever. There's a button? This thing. No, that's not what I wanted. We want these turned like forward, right? Okay. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, okay, we want this one upwards. We want that one upwards. Okay, somehow I managed it. I mean, that was completely intentional. I totally meant to do that. Easy puzzle. Wait, what? I thought I did it. I thought I did it. What if I go up this way now? What? Oh, wait, was, is there like another lever that we have to pull? Maybe? Maybe I missed one? No? Okay. This way? I tried. It just worked this time, apparently. Okay. Don't question it. Is that a Cyberman chassis? Tidy in here. That's not like the doctor. Lots of old clutter, though. Should be easy enough to find something to use as a tractor beam. Ooh, I see a collectible. Gonna grab that. Collectible. Wait, no, I want the collectible. I found a fact. Cricket ball. The fifth doctor always carried a cricket ball in his pocket because of his love of cricket, and this inspired his outfit. In 4 to Doomsday, he used the cricket ball to save his life. When floating in space, he threw the ball, and the inertia propelled him back to the TARDIS. In human nature, while disgu disguising as a human called John Smith, the tenth doctor used a cricket ball to save a mother and baby from a falling piano. Oh, I remember that. I didn't know it was a cricket ball, but that's cool. How do I get this collectible? Oh. Like that. Nazgreen Shadri. Naz Nazreen Shadri. Nazreen is a dedicated scientist with the sense of wonder about the world around, above, and below her. When the doctor decided to travel deep below the Earth's crust, she didn't think twice before volunteering to go with him despite the dangers involved. Yes, cool. Oh, there's probably like so many facts in here. This is like the doctor's place. Oh, there is a Dalek piece. Is there more collectibles before I. Ooh, what is that? Cronin blocker. Oh, that's what we used to save ourselves from uh, from when we were falling back in time in the first episode. Uh, when the Daleks destroyed the human race in 1963, Amy became an anomaly. She should have never been born. As the timeline repaired itself, she began fading away. The Doctor created a chronon blocker from pieces of Dalek technology, which blocked the chronon energies from uh, erasing Amy. This uh, gave them enough time to undo the Dalek plan and save humanity. That was actually the first episode of this series, so if you haven't seen that, go back and watch it right now. Don't want to spoil too much. And a Dalek eye stock. So Daleks first appeared in the 1963 story, The Daleks, where they met the first Doctor. They were only meant to appear once, but were later brought back by popular demand. They have met every other Doctor on screen except for the eighth. The eye stock and the Daleks' greatest weakness in Destiny of the Daleks 1979, the fourth Doctor throws his hat over a Dalek eye stock so he can't escape, causing it to shriek, my vision is impaired. I never realized how weak that is for a Dalek to just have like this eye stock that's super easy to prevent. Ooh, Sonic Blaster. The Sonic Blaster can disintegrate and reintegrate its targets and fires a strange square-shaped pulse. Oh, I remember that. It was made in the weapons factories of Villengard, as mentioned in The Doctor's Dances. The factory that produced the blasters was destroyed in the ninth 
Ninth Doctor hints that he was responsible, saying that there's now a nice banana grove in his place. In the silence of the library, River Song has the same weapon, which suggests that she has taken it from the TARDIS in the future. Oh, so did she take this exact one? Possibly? Uh, cricket ball. Okay, so we just talked about the cricket ball. Um, oh, I, I did read this already. I guess I thought I was clicking on something else. Journal of Impossible Things. In human nature, the 10th Doctor was disguised as a human called John Smith to hide from the family of blood who wanted his life force. But his Time Lord memories appeared in his dreams and he wrote them down in his Journal of Impossible Things. Oh yeah! Joan Redfern's great-granddaughter, Verinity Newman, published a Journal of Impossible Things based on Joan's diaries before regenerating the 10th Doctor visited her and brought a copy of the book. That's cool. That was like the chameleon arch or whatever, which makes the a Time Lord forget who they are. So I think they become like human and they forget about anything in their past. And once they open up whatever it was that was uh, concealing all that Time Lord energy, then they can like remember everything again. Same way they uh, introduced the master in one of the episodes, probably in multiple episodes, actually. Map of Medieval Venice. So when the 11th Doctor, Amy, and Rory visited 16th century Venice, they met the Sisters of the Water. Seen through a perceptive filter, they appear as beautiful women, but in reality, they're vampire-like fish aliens. The Sisters of the Water fled their planet Satur Saturnin to avoid the mysterious silence. Once in Venice, they began converting people into more of their kind. Female partners for the male survivors of their world. The Doctor had to stop them from destroying Venice, which they wanted to make into a habitable home for their race. What's that noise? Nothing good, I bet. Oh no! No, no, I was reading everything! Did I take too long? I will take a look. I don't want to do it yet though. I want to make sure we get all these facts in here if I can. Ooh, that's the chameleon arch right there, I think. Let me actually grab this. <gasps> Captain Jack Harkness, the dashing intergalactic rogue and indestructible man of action. Cool. And what is that? Ood Translator. The Ood are telepathic aliens with no vocal cords. When used by humans as slaves, their hindbrain was removed and a translator was fitted so they could communicate with non-telepathic beings. They are a peaceful race who were forced into slavery by humans until the 10th Doctor freed them. The Ood had telepathic visions of the 10th Doctor's death and warned him that he was in great danger. Cool. Did we do this mask already? Liz 10's face mask. Liz 10 is Queen Elizabeth the 10th who ruled over the Starship UK, a colony ship from Earth containing the entire United Kingdom except Scotland because they wanted their own ship. <laughs> Okay. When strange events take place on the Starship UK, the Queen goes undercover to investigate wearing a mask and calling herself Liz 10. She never questioned why the mask, supposedly an antique, is mod modeled or molded to the exact shape of her face. At the end of the episode, she gives the mask to Amy. Okay. And we have a... It's kind of hard to direct what we want to click on. Distress Beacon. When a Distress Beacon is activated, it transmits a signal so rescuers can find those in need for help. Sometimes people use inter international recognized Morse code, Distress Signal, three dots, three dashes, three dots, or short and long beeps. It stands for SOS, which was chosen because it is easy to remember. In Blood of the Cyberman, the beacon was activated at Arctic Geological Survey Outpost Zebra Bay when some staff were being converted to cyber slaves. So this is a reference to the last episode that we played, Blood of the Cyberman. And yeah, so if you haven't seen that one, go see that one as well before you watch the rest of this one, just in case there's any more spoilers. Uh, okay, so we have Cyberman chess piece. That's what I thought it was. So Cyberman first appeared in the 10th planet, although at the South Pole rather than the North Pole in episode two of the Adventure Games. The 10th planet was the first Doctor's last episode and the first time a regeneration was seen on screen. The Cybermen have encountered every Doctor on screen except for the 8th and the 9th, but the Doctor was more uh, has more adventures than we get to see, so they may have met those Doctors too. Interesting, this is the Chameleon Arch, right? What? A fob watch? 
have first seen in human nature, the fob watch was used to store the memories of physiological physiology of the doctor so he could disguise himself as a human using a chameleon arch okay that's that's what i meant right it's the watch that holds the stuff the the human memory or human the time lord memories and uh, yeah the chameleon arch that's basically what it is it had a perception filter to stop the doctor getting too curious about it. If he opened the watch, it would restore his memories. In Utopia, Professor Yana also had a fob watch, which contained his true identity, the master. When he opened it, the master returned. And that's what I was referencing. What is that? Time Lord staff? Ooh. In the end of time parts one and two, the Time Lords were seen carrying ornate staffs as part of the ceremonial outfits. The Time Lord called Resilion helped to develop time travel technology used in the TARDIS. He was the Lord President during the Time War, and his attempt to save the Time Lords would have destroyed the universe. The Tenth Doctor sealed the Time Lords and Gallifrey in a time lock to prevent them from carrying out their plan. There's a lot of really cool stuff in here. Uh-oh. Okay. thought I was stuck. And I think this is the last item. I don't think we missed anything else. Uh, yeah, we already saw that. I don't think we miss anything else. The Skorax staff. Well, there's two staffs in here. The Skorax were, are warlike alien invaders who tried to conquer Earth in the 10th Doctor's first adventure, the Christmas Invasion. They were able to hypnotize a third of the human race and use this to try to force Earth to surrender. The Doctor fought them and defeated their leader in a sword fight. When the Doctor mentioned them in the Shakespeare Code, William Shakespeare liked the sound of the name and went on to use it in his play, The Tempest. All right, so let's go in here now. Grab it. Grab it. Well, if okay. So much junk everywhere that wouldn't have happened. It's not that messy. What? Uh oh. Okay, that was just that was just you being clumsy. That was it wasn't that messy in there. I find this laser screwdriver thingy. What do I do with it? Excellent. Right, now you need to go to the console nearest the door. Insert the laser screwdriver into the slot and push the button. Okay, so this console? Um, not this console? Is there another console? Uh, it's this one, right? Which console? <laughs> He said the nearest to the door. I forgot that the obvious mechanic of clicking on it. Ah, okay. So we want to connect the laser screwdriver to the TARDIS. Okay. Oh yeah, it's this mini game. Ah, this we're good at this now. It's super easy. Nope. Left. Left. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was horrible. But we did it. Oh no, it's this minigame again. Okay, so we can hit this. And that... Turn that. And... That goes down. Um, is it only those things that we're hitting? Oh, what does this do? Oh, I see. Nope. Okay, this, this is probably good. Yeah, yeah. Just how nice work, we did it. Once or twice. By the way, you really need to tidy that drawing room, and I owe you a new thingy of aftershave. Aftershave, I don't know, but we're sliding off to the next pocket. Oh, good, a bell, because the other alarms weren't loud enough. That's the cloister bell. It means something is very, very wrong, and I don't know how to fix it. There is a lot of bells going off. That's weird. Doctor, where's he gone now? Oh. Great. Would anything else like to go wrong? Anything at all? <laughs> I, I love that, that picture. Time's fallen out of sync. Amy's lost somewhere in time, or maybe I'm the one who's lost. That'd be rubbish. <laughs> I need to figure out when about some time I am and see how much power is left. 
Okay, well, um, uh, obviously because we're the doctor, we can just go up to like our console or something. Um, find out what is happening. Well, can I not just like ex wait, wait, examine? Okay, there we go. Make your mind up. Am I here or a thousand years in the future? Here or future? Here? Future? <laughs> so we don't know where we are. I do have my Sanic. All right, we can't use that. Unfortunate. Well, when in doubt, let's just explore the TARDIS. <laughs> now let's go up. Definitely the correct way. <laughs> now we'll go this way. Just want to test all the different ways. Oh. I can't go that way though. Okay. Okay, something here. Oh, okay, now we can interact with this thing. Possibilities. That's not good. It's a lesion in time. Amy's stuck in the future. I'm back here. I can fix it by setting off a reverse tachyon feedback loop from both directions at once. Hmm. Tricky. But not impossible for a clever chap like me. The parts I need should be in the drawing room. I'll need something to keep track of time and something to focus the time. In. Everything's in the drawing room. I'm talking to myself already. That's a new record. Well, I, I'm technically talking to myself too. All right, let's go back to the drawing room. Hey, all the facts again. That's impossible. It had a triple deadlock force field. That means the entity has escaped. The entity? <laughs> Who fact? Time. Time is how we understand and measure the length of flow of events. Oh, and flow of events. Imagine a river flowing constantly. If you drop something in the river, it will affect everything in its path after that point. Similarly, if you change something in the past, it will affect the present and future, but some events are fixed and cannot be changed. Only a time lord knows which ones. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's really anything here. Why is this one blue and these ones are going purple? Oh, so we want to grab that. Now I just need something to focus and hold the time in place. Um, okay. Recorder. Wait, recorder? Oh, I didn't even click on that before, did I? The second doctor often played a recorder to help himself think or to distract his enemies. The three doctors, or in the three doctors, the recorder was used to defeat Omega and save the doctor. It came into contact with an antimatter universe, and because it has had not been converted into antimatter, it caused a huge explosion. Luckily for the second doctor, he had several more recorders. There's probably like a whole room of recorders in the TARDIS. Hey, the Cronin Blocker. It contains a Cronon Crystal, exactly what I need to focus and hold time. Okay. Sonic. Do the thing. Oh, gotta assemble it. Oh, it's this minigame. Why did that make me jump? Oh. No! Okay. I'm going too fast, going too fast. But will I slow down? No, I won't. Got it on my third, first try, I mean. Easy. Um, okay, so now we have a crystal, fob watch, and a sonic screwdriver. Can I use it? No. Okay, well, let's just, we're done, we're done here. 10 out of 10 animation right there. I loved it. Oh. <laughs> he almost like tripped on the stairs. More mini games. Oh, no, not this one. I'm just, I'm so amazing at these ones. I mean. That 
I was so close. <gasps> I didn't see it coming at me a second time. Now, oh. Amy needs to use this as well as me, but there's a thousand years between us. I've got to transfer enough power to her time. Make sure she gets this and send her a message somehow. Okay, so we got to send the tachyon feedback loop to Amy. Well, obviously, we just use the TARDIS, right? This is a good place. Okay. So we put this down here. I don't know where we just put it. Put it somewhere. And we boost the power with, obviously, our San... No, apparently not our Sanic. Now I need to find an oscillator device to boost the power. Um, okay. Hmm. Where do I get an oscillator device? Potentially back in... Oh. Um, I think I got to go up this way. This way? So I think I need something else from in here. Is this an oscillator? No, this is a fact. Oh, uh, not what I want. Not what I want. Oh yeah, the recorder. I remember there being some technology thing in here. Okay, is there anything else we need? think so. Leave? Okay. Don't have to open it up or anything, so that's good to know. Alright. No, 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 don't turn away. We need to do this. We need to save Amy. Um, click it. No. Yes. Oh no, not this mini game. <laughs> uh What oh uh, well. Um I don't know. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, so I turn that a bit. Oh, okay, okay. And now we just need this. Did I, that, that counted? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Last time I did that mini game, I had to be like perfect, like exact. It's I sat there for like five minutes trying to get that perfect. This one just happened. Amy, it's me. Well, That's not fair. I mean, I'll take it. I'm not going to complain. Doctor, is that you? Oh no, the thing, the entity. Get off me. Ah! 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 Amy, it's me. Well, a recording of me, but that's neither here nor there. Unlike us, who are both here and there, in a sense. Oh, stop rambling! Anyway, I'm rambling. The time riptide has destabilized a force field, which was trapping a sort of glowy, blobby thing called the entity. It's not aftershave, it's a hungry life form, and it wants to eat the time energy from your past. It's bad, I get it, talk faster! There's a lesion in time, separating us by a thousand years. You're in my future, so I've set this alarm for you. You need to answer some questions to prove who you are. If someone else finds this before you, it'll stop them unlocking the code. Okay. What did Queen Elizabeth the tenth rule over. Oh, this is like a mini thing. Good thing we read all the facts. Because that was Starship UK. Who tried to save Gallifrey in the Time War? Um, Was it Re Resilient? I think it was Re Resilient. I, I almost forgot that one. What was Gallifrey sealed inside in the end of time? A time lock? Yeah. Okay. What story did the Cyberman first appear in? The 10th planet? 
When did the Daleks first appear? The Daleks? Okay, I'm guessing. I, I mean, I definitely know all of these. Who forced the Ood into slavery? Humans, unfortunately. Why or what did the doctor use to save his life in the Four to Doomsday? Save his life? Was this the hat one? Where he put it over the Dalek's eyeball? No, I gotta do all of them all over again. Alright. Speedrun. I'm sad that I didn't get it right on my first... Oh, yeah, so... When... Wait, when did the Daleks first appear? Wasn't this a later question? What if I put don't know? What would happen? I feel like these are all wrong. Is it Day of the Daleks? What? <laughs> they all give you don't know though. Is it really Genesis of the Daleks? They were all wrong. That's not fair. <laughs> Doctor, that's not fair, man. Did you really, did you really troll me? The doctor really just troll me? So what happens if I say don't know? I should have clicked this earlier. Maybe I should check out all that junk in the drawing room. The answers must be in there. Did I answer this one correct the first time? I think I answered that one correct and I mixed it up on a different question. Just like... Yeah, this was the hat. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, wait, what question did I get wrong? Oh no, okay. I'm going crazy, I'm going crazy. Oh my god, I'm so dumb. I thought it was that one that I got wrong, but I actually answered it correct before. And then I avoided the one that I answered previously. Was this the one I got wrong? I thought it was hat. Wait, four to doomsday. Four to doomsday. I thought this one was hacks. I thought it was a question about the Daleks that I messed up. Cricket ball? Who was the doctor hiding from in human nature? The Smilers family of blood? Human nature. Family of blood? Should I go check? I, I don't want to go check. I want to guess. Okay. What did Queen Elizabeth the 10th call herself? Oh, Liz 10. Easy. What city did the Sisters of the Water try to take over? Venice. Wow, I... Actually, you're hearing me say this, so you must have answered the questions correctly. Unless you didn't, in which case you can't, and I'm talking to myself. Again. It needs to be activated at both ends of the time lesion. Just press the button and it'll sync up with the one in my time. <coughs> Just press no. the button. No, what have you done to me? Amy, you did it. Yay! Huh, got me. I'm still feeling a bit wobbly though. Okay. I I answer those questions oh. amazingly. Oh, that never works. Fix now, applause later. Now, I know you understand me. Speak. The TARDIS translation circuits will allow us to hear you. Then hear this. You will perish. Release Amy right now, or I'll lock you up again while you're busy finishing her off. No. You held me prisoner before. I had to. If you kept eating, there'd be nothing left. It'd get very boring. Now, let her go. But I must feed on both of you. You don't need to do that. I must feed. Yeah, 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 you said. Blimey, see why I kept it locked up? I found a place you can feed safely. An all-you-can-eat buffet. Where is this place? Well, let Amy go. Give her back her time and I'll tell you. Your choice. Feed forever. Keep Amy and starve in here. You have so much time. 
I will feast on you instead. No. I must lead. Stop hurting my friend now. Give her back her time or I'll never let you eat again. I have a good mind to just leave you in there. But I keep my word. Chronomites. Four-dimensional void creatures streaming through the time riptides for infinity. Eat their pass and they just circle back around again, unharmed. You can stuff your face. If you have a face, I don't know. Now, are you going to behave yourself? This is acceptable. Release me. You didn't mention the itching. No, completely slipped my mind. <laughs> I saw a collectible. <clears throat> Amy, you look good as new. I wonder what we should do now you're back to normal. We can just explore? While I make sure everything's working. Alright, fine. I'll just stand around doing nothing. That's always fun. I saw a collectible somewhere. <gasps> right there. At least it lets you uh, get it. The master, a time lord like the doctor, but not like the doctor. <laughs> he was born on Gallifrey and was a doctor's childhood friend, but his ultimate goal is to rule the universe and, if he can, hurt the doctor as much as possible in the process. That's very nice of him. Nah, not really. But did I get all of the things? Awesome, okay. So I don't know what else I'm supposed to do here. Am I not basically just done? This is a diagnostics panel. Ooh, inter inertial, inertial dampers. These compensate for the speed of travel and stop us getting thrown around. In theory, press it again. In theory, anyway, must get them fixed. Bunsen burner. Oh, nice. Used for heating and burning test samples in the event of the scanner being unable to identify a substance. I like how it's just attached to your console. Cooling systems, the engines generate a lot of heat when in use and require a sophisticated cooling system to stop them overheating. Nice, okay. Water dispenser? A mic slash water dispenser? The microphone is for the voice recorder and broadcasting messages. The water dispenser is for something else. Although if I'm being honest, the water dispenser is mainly used for filling the kettle. Okay, diluting samples for testing. That's the sentence I missed. Oh, did not want to hit escape. Okay. So is this just looking through the controls and it like kind of teaches you all of them? That's kind of neat. So we got this thing up here. Directional pointer orients the TARDIS in space, letting you turn in any direction. Yeah, when it's working, of course. <laughs> The Atom Accelerator. This provides the energy for traveling through time and space. It's supposed to be powered up before using the space-time throttle. Time and space forward back control. Forward or backwards, pretty safe, self-explanatory really. I think that's what it's for anyway. <laughs> Spatial location input. This enables you to choose an exact place in physical space to travel to without all the tricky steering. Nice. But well, you can use it. Oh, can I click on these things and actually hit use on any of them? I guess not. Wow, there's a lot of stuff here. I don't know if it's going to make me go through all of them. Eyepiece, if the external scanners aren't working, the eyepiece works as an optical viewfinder with as much limited view than, uh, than the scanners. With a much more limited view than the scanners. Space-time throttle, this adjusts the speed of travel through space and time either separately or simultaneously. Okay, and then we have this thing. The time rotor handbrake immediately stops this artist from traveling through time unless you're going too fast and you'll skid for a bit. Err, apparently. Err. Err. TARDIS display dials from left to right. These display engine cycles per second, engine temperature, time route speed, or rotor speed, and exterior temperature. Gyroscopic stabilizer. When the inertia initial uh, dampeners aren't powerful enough, this will stabilize the TARDIS and keep it upright while traveling, supposedly. I like how he's so certain of everything on here. 
Um, oh, I already clicked on that one. Door release lever locks and unlocks a door. I'm always forgetting to <laughs> and walking into them. That's a really bad way to lock and unlock doors, but engine release lever when the engines are fully powered up. This engages the gears and lets them control the TARDIS. Locking down mechanism, a handbrake to stop the TARDIS traveling in physical space. Don't forget the time handbrake too, or she'll drive drift off into time. Interesting. I'm really glad I don't have to drive this. What's this thingy? Time altimeter. It's tricky to know exactly when now is during the time travel. This displays how fast the TARDIS is going. Materialize and dematerialize function. This engages the engines and makes the TARDIS appear and disappear. Leave the handbrake on. It makes a lovely sound. <laughs> That's the sound that we all hear. Fabricated dispenser. The TARDIS can create devices of its own, like a new sonic screwdriver. Uh, it takes a lot of time and energy, though. Harmonic generator. This creates resonant harmonics when the TARDIS is about to materialize or dematerialize, so it doesn't cause too much disturbance. Heisenberg focusing device. You can observe a subatomic sub particle pos position and state, but never both at once. The device compensates... Blah, blah, blah. Good old Werner Heisenberg. I renamed this after him when he helped me fix it. Lovely bloke. Hated nuclear weapons. Surprisingly good singer. Do I have to go through all this? I don't really know what I'm supposed to do here. Analog telephones enables people with older forms of communication to contact me no matter where the TARDIS is and the call will connect. Digital comm, a device for communicating with other spacecraft or anything with a digital transceiver. Scanner typewriter, this examines and analyzes any substances in the vicinity. It also a very good typewriter when it's a good fresh ribbon. When it's got a good fresh ribbon. Now I don't really know how to use a typewriter. It would be really cool to try one. Analog radio waves detect monitor changes for receiving and transmitting radio waves. It can also alter them without the sender realizing it. Okay, well I think I've like touched everything now. Everything seems to be working. I wonder what we should do now. Let's... Wait, let's explore as Amy to see if she has a different take on all the TARDIS thingies. As long as I can have a go on the console. Like, is she just gonna have, like, really funny explanations for everything? Or is everything she's gonna be like, I don't know what this does. I don't know what this does. Let's see. Okay. Um... Bunsen burner. Just like in chemistry at school, I heated the wrong beaker and smoked out the school for a day. It was brilliant. So she does have, she has different things to say at least. I've seen the doctor using these to stop things shaking around so much, but I don't think they, they're working too well. That looks like it keeps an eye on the engine temperature. Must stop things overheating. Okay, this is kind of cool now. Maybe, maybe I won't cut it out. I'll leave this in. This spins a TARDIS around. Great, like it doesn't do enough of that. How do I know which way is up? No idea what this is, but when I turn it, I can hear something powering up. Must be important. Good point. Only moves forward or backwards. That must be all it does. Doesn't this thing have gears? A proper keyboard. If I type in where I want to go, will it take me there? Good question. I keep pressing escape for some reason. Okay, so let's click on this here. It's a bit like a viewfinder on a cheap camera. Looks like the throttle on a plane. I went on a simulator once. It was brilliant. I can use this to go faster or slower. Nice. Oh, this has the, the brake too. And click on that. This one has to be the handbrake. It looks like one anyways. Only one way to find out. <laughs> it's positive thinking right there. Press it and... See what happens. Okay, let's start here. The doctor always uses this after we've stopped. There's a time handbrake. Maybe this is the normal handbrake. This is the very last thing the doctor uses before we appear or disappear. I think it's the gear. It seems to trigger the engines. I've used this before. It locks and unlocks the doors easy. Yes. I think this keeps the TARDIS the right way up when we're getting flung about. We could do that with a few more of them, really. <laughs> Hmm, display dials. I'm going to ignore those unless they go into a danger area. Then I'll start pressing buttons. Okay, I'm glad I went back through this with Amy because they're kind of funny to read through. 
Um, this one only seems to move when we're moving, though. Or when we're moving through time, but must be a time spe speedometer or something like that. Uh, I definitely know this. It's the one that makes the TARDIS appear and disappear. It's the last thing the Doctor uses before we start moving. Cool. I saw the Doctor make a new sonic screwdriver out of this thing. I'm going to call it the Makey Uppy Thingy. I like that name better. This must be important. The Doctor always uses it before using the appeary disappeary thingy. Everything goes a bit wobbly when it's on. Another control the Doctor seems to mess around with at random. I don't think he actually knows how to fly this thing. <laughs> well, he had a better explanation for everything, but she's pretty close. Like, I'm actually shocked how much uh, she's referencing here. It's a telephone, just an ordinary telephone. Well, not that ordinary. We got a call from Winston Churchill once. Yes, that Winston Churchill. <laughs> Looks like the world's oldest dictaphone? What's a dictaphone? One second. Dictaphone. What the What is this? Okay. I'll put a I'll put a picture there, but I don't I don't even know what this is by staring at it. This can't just be a typewriter. I've seen the doctor scanning stuff with it before. It looks like it needs a little needs a new ribbon too. I think a ribbon is something with the typewriter to get it to smoothly type or something. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of just speaking on at random here. Communications. We've had people contact us through this thing before. Sounds like some sort of radio thingy, you know. For such a new TARDIS, it's got a lot of old junk. And was that it? I think that's it. Well, I'm glad we went back through and talked or read most of the stuff for Amy as well. And I think this might be the end of the episode here. Don't worry, I didn't break anything. It's kind of a weird ending if that's the truth. Try not to make it so bumpy this time, if you can. She's a bit temperamental sometimes, the TARDIS, but then again, so am I. Okay, time to go. I'll have to be quick. We've got 60 seconds to get the TARDIS going or I'll have to start again. Quick, lock the doors. Oh no, I, I'm going to have to know how to drive this thing. I'm really glad I don't have to drive this. Okay, so we want to... Oh, we want to lock the doors. This thing. 60 seconds. Pay attention, Pon. You might need to remember this one day. Now to power out the atom accelerator. Okay, okay. Atom accelerator. That's a that little, little spinny thingy. Do, 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 do. Let me just run into everything. Click on this. Did it work? Nearly got it. Pull the dematerialized lever. Okay. Which one was that one? This one? No? Oh, it's this one. Oh, no, 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 no. Do you materialize? Right. Now to engage the inertial dampeners. Inertia dampeners? Where was that one? This thing, right? And we're off at last. Pull space and time throttle to adjust the speed. Uh, I don't remember that one. I don't remember. This thing? I do it? Did I do it? I mean, it really helped that it kind of like showed you which module to click on by lighting up. Where were we? Oh yes, sightseeing. Somewhere nice. And no trouble this time? Where's the fun in that? Oh, hang on. I know, I know just the place. You'll love it. It's very quiet, peaceful, and perfectly safe. I did that. I drove it. That was all me. Here we are. London after the great flood of the 23rd century. Oh, that was cool. Wait, is that going to be what we see the next episode? That would be really cool. Well, that was the end of this episode. That was not what I was expecting. It felt like a much shorter episode overall. A lot of reading. Um, we, we saw a lot of facts at the, the very first room, which I think took up a decent amount of time. And then we went through and we looked at all of the controls on the TARDIS, which was kind of cool because we got to actually go through and try to uh, not really fly it, but 
pick the correct controls to take off and and actually what you would do to fly the TARDIS. But that was very interesting. If you guys enjoyed the episode, comment down below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.